Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Nothing like a bit of a skit here with, uh, to lighten the mood. Because uh, now we're going to continue again and delve deep in uh, further into this topic. And I would like to uh, tell you uh, my thoughts um, and try to answer this question here, why an AI lab needs an ethics policy. And maybe we'll start with this question, what are ethics? Well, um, we're not going to turn this into a tutorial, but um, I think it suffices to just look at a few things, a uh, few uh, keywords here, and you will get a very good idea uh, of what this word actually refers to. Um, it's, it's about the things we feel are right and wrong in life. Um, some of them are more right, some of them are more wrong than others, and so on. But we all have some sort of an inner compass to guide us um, in, our, uh, um, re uh, in our views on, on, uh, on uh, various acts of various people at various times. And um, some of us who are doing research have thought a bit about what research and ethics uh, means, or, re or ethics for research. And um, as you know, uh, research doesn't get done by itself. Um, researchers have to be funded by something. Applied research typically is funded by product development, pro sa sales of products, and, and basic research, that for which you can't really show an immediate potential profit, gets funded by public funds. And society's expectations to researchers is that they do their best to advance the state of knowledge, to communicate the results, to not make them a secret for uh, secret purposes, and that they be truthful. So an ethics policy over and above the law, or beyond the law, because some of the ethics are, of course, encoded in the law, but not all. Um, an ethics policy can guide decisions about research methods, can be used to guard the uh, rights of, of the general public, and, and, and especially minority groups, safeguarding the environment, and emphasize points of importance. And yet, it's very rare to see any research labs, uh, at least the ones I know of, uh, publishing a, a specific ethics policy that they follow. Typically, um, if they do get published, they are targeted towards some specific aspect of their activities, not across the board. For instance, uh, the way that they do, uh, that they treat their animals, etc. But uh, since we are talking here about software, you might ask, isn't AI just software? So if we have already a mature software industry following uh, the, the law of the land, why do we need to talk specifically about ethics of AI? How would these policies for AI be different? And I, I want to talk a little bit about this. So modern software systems are artifacts. And of course, ethics policies could guide the production and operation of such artifacts and make clear the responsibilities and conducts of those who produce them. Now, uh, there's nothing really new here, um, but there might be a, a remaining question here. Is AI different from other fields somehow? Is AI technology somehow different? Uh, something uh, in a way that could justify requiring um, different ethics policies. Now, um, some reasons that AI systems might be different, I, I just list a few here. That I'm, I'm sure you could come up with some others. Uh, these are kind of the most obvious ones. And uh, uh, Noel Sharkey actually went through some of these with, uh, with his excellent examples. But um, immediately it springs to mind uh, 
are these systems that we build using AI technologies, are they more error prone in some way? Are, do, is their behavior less predictable? Are they more, more prone to faults? Um, do they degrade ungracefully? What, what that means is, you know, if there's a fault, do they completely blow up in your face? I'm talking not literally here, but uh, I think you get my point. AI systems um, could also be of a different kind. It could be a different nature. Uh, that could be the reason why we might want to talk about ethics in, in, um, co in the context of AI. So um, AI systems, for instance, uh, do they act on their own? Do they have independent thought? Do they have independent goals or ideals? Do they have their own wants and needs? So I, I just wanted to put this up in an Excel spreadsheet so that we can just track this very carefully. Um, I, we can go very quickly through the first ones because uh, all of these are, in fact, true. And it's all because of complexity. AI systems, to justify that moniker at all, will have to do more complex things in your than your traditional uh, software systems. So yes, we can, we can say this, but does that make them very different from software systems in general? I'm not so sure. Well, possibly, but not their nature, perhaps. Um, going a bit further here, they are uh, capable of independent action. Um, and I've got action there twice, but um, independent sensing. Um, However, and uh, here's the alarm calling. <laughs> um, however, I uh, cannot subscribe to the theory that AI systems somehow could have independent goals or independent wants and needs. Um, so just to put this in perspective, what we're really seeing here, what is AI? Well, it's really just the march of automation. And you look at <coughs> the history of automation, we can go back to um, James Watt's governor controlling uh, the uh, operation of steam engines, to the mobile phones that we use to take pictures of our family members uh, using face recognition to control the autofocus and the lighting, to automation that decides who lives or dies. So we're really now in the future. There is really um, the this difference between uh, fact and fiction, fiction uh, along these lines is being erased. We have the super aegis, which is on the border of, for instance, uh, North and South Korea there to the left. And we have Robocop, um, the uh, robot policeman from that movie. Uh, and these are essentially now the same thing. So we really are in the future. Now, if we really have automation that decides who lives or dies, what about the false positives? What about the innocent people who get killed by these gadgets? Who is responsible? Is it the algorithm, the programmer, the company or government that set this up, or the legislators that allowed it? Well, could you go to sleep at night knowing that software that you wrote was responsible for killing someone, someone innocent? Well, I couldn't. Now imagine, if you will, for the sake of argument, here's an AI research lab. Uh, this lab has a wide range of collaborators from industry and academia. It develops uh, a wide range of technologies, it has a wide range of output from simple algorithms to systems to, to uh, papers and so on. It has a wide range of funding sources. Among them are, for instance, public competitive grants, as well as private grants, industry contracts, and commissioned prototypes. The Icelandic Institute for Intelligent Machines is exactly that kind of a lab. Um, we have about 10 companies now that we're working very closely with and, and, and academic labs. Um, we have over 20 projects in progress right now. And we have a mixed funding source. Um, 
And we really, all of us, believe that AI technologies can have a potentially very positive impact on our lives for all of humankind, not just for an isolated elite or a small segment. And our concerns are basically with a focus on AI and automation, uh, facilitating knowledge transfer for the benefit of society with a um, serious amount of public funding, benefits should go to the public. We should avoid abuse of the knowledge we generate and we should uh, seek the ethical application of the talent, the know-how, and the products we make. So, with ethics policies uh, so rarely encountered, and with the majority of AI research, historically speaking, uh, funded by military sources, we decided to make our own ethics policy for peaceful R&D. What's the purpose here? Well, the purpose is to codify our civilian research focus in clear and consistent terms. That's it. And I'd like to go through this as a very short policy, and I'd like to go through it with you just very briefly. Um, this is it in its entirety. There's a short preamble that I didn't put in here, which you are free to read uh, if you want to grab uh, our um, uh, newsletter on your way out or later today. Um, so uh, the first bullet here um, codifies our aim. It's to create knowledge for the benefit and betterment of humankind. Um, clause two has four clauses, subclauses. Um, we don't want to participate in any project where um, the intention is to cause bodily injury or several Im or, or uh, severe emotional stress to any person. Um, we don't want to violate the human rights of any person. We don't want to participate in unlawful activities. And we don't want to work on projects whose purp purpose is uh, specifically acts of violence or war. So far, so good. This is simple. And I'm surprised not more research labs just say this out loud. Um, jumping ahead, uh, we decided to go one step further uh, by not accepting military funding uh, for our activities. And further, uh, to not work with companies that, or any, any uh, party for that matter, government, uh, group, or whatever, that uh, whose, whose uh, funding has been uh, received for uh, the past five years uh, is more than 15% of the total, total revenue. Now, where's the Terminator here? Why aren't I talking about AI going Baroque? Oh, going rogue, not Baroque. Uh, well, if you remember this spreadsheet exercise we did, I don't think really our immediate concern should be these guys. Because frankly, these belong to the same group as another well-known story, which is over 100 years old. And it's based on the same fear-mongering um, Yes, of course, we should be careful with what we do with our knowledge. But um, this is not the immediate threat of AI as a technology. Will it ever be? I don't know. Frankly, anyone who says they do is writing science fiction. So. Can the same ethics apply to those who make things as to those who make things that think? Well, yes. That's why we created this ethics policy. Um, the purpose of this ethics policy is to make crystal clear the civilian research focus of our institute. 
It helps employees stay away from morally gray areas. It makes the road very clean and clear. If there's any doubt in the, our researcher's mind about whether some project is ethical or, or unethical, this is the place they start. It sends a clear message of a peaceful purpose. And I'm very happy to say this um, it has already made some <clears throat> people very interested in, uh, in our uh, in our institute uh, and has made some headlines uh, in a couple of uh, uh, outlets so far since its introduction in August of this year. So what we need to ask ourselves uh, are some difficult questions. Could this ethics policy help increase emphasis on civilian research focus? Could it help reduce conflict or slow the arms race? Well, I think so. Um, and this is why we have made it very clear on our website that this is an ethics policy we follow. But it's not sufficient that one lab does this, which is why we released it under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 international license, uh, which, which uh, allows you, basically, to share uh, and adapt this policy. So we really want others to join in this. And we believe that the effects, just like uh, Noel Sharkey's iCrack team, has already made impact on uh, international uh, this dialogue. I think we, if we get people with us on this, um, it could have a real impact. And that's all I wanted to say for now. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.